issues in your setup, so usually it's not that a feature that we want to promote as something great, but like it needs to be there to get uh, fixes for your best status. Uh, what we are gonna do, uh, we will make some kind of introduction with some kind of terminology to be able to, uh, to talk about what is fencing, how is it done. Uh, then I will show you some uh, real life examples, some situations and what, how, fe how fencing tries to fix this, those situations. And we also take a look at uh, future plans because there are still some areas that we would like to improve. Uh, before I start, uh, just for my uh, knowledge, uh, how many of you are you using Overt? Okay. Uh, how many of, of uh, let's say, of you have ever needed fencing? Like, I don't think in Overt, but regularly in, in some other cluster where... Okay, so it seems that, like, uh, it's usual that things doesn't work as expected, so we need something like that. Uh, so, uh, just in, in short, this is very uh, simplified uh, picture showing the architecture of over. Uh, we have something called engine. It's uh, kind of brain of the whole the system. Uh, everything important is, is uh, decided and, and executed at, at this machine. Uh, we have a bunch of hosts uh, which is used to run your VMs uh, and uh, all of these hosts are connected to the shared storage so we can uh, migrate uh, VMs between those hosts. Uh, we also have some kind of logical units that like a bunch of, uh, uh, of hosts uh, accessing the, the, the same storage can be uh, treat it as a cluster and each uh, cluster can have some kind of special uh, configuration. Uh, the above uh, cluster is a data center because like it uh, makes a set of cluster and also it uh, makes a set of storage that can be used in those clusters. Uh, Host uh, can have a uh, network connection, either uh, the green one is, is like the typical network connection you want, and uh, the red one is usually uh, the power management of the host. I will talk about it later, but it's uh, an, an interface that allows you to, uh, for example, stop and start your host uh, using uh, power management actions, not like doing SSH to the machine and execute shutdown, but really like to turn off, for example, electricity or your host and shut his down. So, uh, as I said, we have a host. Uh, this is a physical server to run hypervisor on and the VMs. We have a cluster, which is like set of hosts with some kind of uh, same uh, capabilities and uh, same configurations. Uh, we have a data center, which is set of clusters and storage. And uh, also we have something that is called highly available VM. Uh, by default, uh, if VM runs on one host and this host uh, crashes or stopped working, uh, the VM uh, is not uh, like restarted automatically. Uh, if we detect that the host is really down, we just mark it as, as down and it's up to an administrator what to do with this VM. Uh, but if this VM is uh, configured as highly available, we want to uh, run it on a different host as fast as possible. So if we detect that it crashed the host, we need to make sure that the VM is still not running, it doesn't access storage and so on. And once we are assured of that, we execute it on a different host. So this is, this is what we call the highly available VM. Uh, some other terminology, power management interface. Uh, it's uh, usually in most modern servers, you have a special uh, network uh, connection, which, is, which contains the device that you are able to like, uh, start the host remotely or shut down host remotely 
or get his status and, and like other functions. Uh, this is what we are using to, to manage uh, power of our host. Uh, Fence Agent, it's a tool that like provides a common API for us to manage all types of uh, power management interfaces. Because like the most usual is uh, IPMI, but there is DREC and some other uh, proprietary power management interface and we want like to handle them in a, a single API and that's uh, what we used uh, Fence Agent for. Uh, Fence Agent is not over specific. It's the same uh, package that is used, for example, by Cluster Suite or OpenStack. Uh, another term is non-responsive host. Uh, it's uh, the host that like engine can, cannot communicate with. There is something happen, uh, engine is not able to contact the host and we need to uh, find out what and try to fix it. Uh, fence proxy, it's a, it's a like when you take, when we get back uh, to the, uh, to the picture, uh, for example, if this host is, is uh, non-responsive, we need somehow to contact its power management API to find out if it's down or up or something broken. Uh, using this, we are, we select different hosts and on this host, we execute the fence agent to contact uh, the VDSM, uh, uh, to contact the host uh, to know the status or to execute the action. Why is that? Uh, usually the engine uh, is uh, like a point of access for our clients and uh, we, don't, uh, we don't usually have uh, direct access to uh, power management API of the host because it's like considered to be secret and not open to the public. So that's why we like uh, execute an action on our own hypervisor, which calls uh, the fence agent to execute the action. <coughs> so that's fence proxy. Uh, now uh, let's take a look uh, at the UI of over. Uh, when you add a host, there is a, a special tab called power management and he, here you can uh, set up uh, some things. The important things is here. Uh, this is, for example, the IPMI interface of, of the server, which we can get the status. Uh, on this picture, there is also a secondary uh, agent, which is like not directly at the host, but for example, it can be the UPS port of, of the host to power. So if we cannot contact this, this host for some networking issue or it died completely, we can uh, take a look here uh, at, the, at the UPC and say, okay, the host is without power. We can be sure that it's dead. Uh, okay, so uh, this, is, this is the slide uh, when I told you how uh, this power management uh, operation works. So we, when engine, for example, when, for example, administrator want to know the status of a host, so we execute uh, an action, for example, get status in engine, which contacts some other host in, in the cluster. And on this host, we execute fence agent, which is using like different IP address, for example, to get the power status of the, of the desired host. Uh, this, is, this is the simple scenario. It, uh, usually in, in production in large size, uh, these uh, like networks are completely separated. So th this, that's why also why we, why we use uh, this a bit more complicated scenario. So uh, as we said, we need some other host which is like execute uh, the power management command. Uh, we call it uh, fence proxy selection and uh, it, uh, it's a process that like uh, gets all the other hosts or from the, from the cluster or data center, uh, evaluates them and pick up a single one which like fit best its status to, to be uh, assured that the power management action is successful. So using this process, we evaluate the host, we 
uh, get rid of everything that has connection problems, they are non-operational for some reason, and we take just the, the best fit host, and uh, this uh, is uh, uh, selected to execute power management operation. Uh, by default, the process starts that we try to use the host from the same cluster as the one that we want to execute power action on. If it's not possible, we go up and we try to select the, the host from the same data center but different cluster. <laughs> Even when this is not possible, we also may try uh, the other data center, but uh, like this really depends on configuration and uh, you have to enable it manually because uh, as by default, we don't expect that the data centers are ever connected. But if you know that your data centers are connected, you can enable. So even if your whole data center is down, you can still get the status and restart the host from other data center. So uh, this is uh, the same dialog uh, of, uh, of, the, of the host detail. Here are advanced parameters and here you can see that for this host, we try to, sele uh, to select the fence proxy first from the same cluster. If not succeeded, we continue to the data center of the host. If you want, for example, at other data center, you can do this using this button. Uh, by default, uh, this is the default, like the same data center, same, uh, same cluster. This is default uh, for the project. If you want to change it globally, you can. If you want to customize per host, you can do it here. So, uh, fencing. Uh, like uh, speaking, uh, easy speaking, is so fencing is a process that tries to make non-responsive host resp responsive again. Uh, it, it uses like uh, several approaches, which I'll show you later how to do it, how to achieve it. And uh, it's like uh, tightly coupled with host monitoring. So usually uh, when you take a look at host monitoring, we try to monitor our host. And if there are, for example, some connection issues, we like wait a bit more time if it's temporary or not. Uh, if like some kind of timeout which can be customized uh, is passed over. We mark those hosts as non-responsive and try to execute fencing to him to be uh, responsive again. Uh, why is the fence needing? Uh, as we said, uh, for highly available VM, we need to be sure that like this VM is no longer running on the host that is non-responsive. Why? If we execute the same VM on the different host, there could be data corruption. And that's the things that we need to prevent at all costs. So uh, how do we know that like the VM doesn't work or, or it's really shut down? Uh, we have, uh, at the moment, we have long, like only two, uh, two things. Uh, if we s successfully detect that host is in uh, dumping process, we know it's dead and the VM cannot run in, or we successfully execute uh, the host shutdown and the, the host status after it is off, we know that the VM is not running. So this is the only case when we can start like uh, execution of the highly available VM on different hosts. So the fencing process is like uh, try to fix the host and if it's not possible, try either detect its, its dumping or detect its, uh, its shutdown so we can like treat the VMs again to be either down or is highly available to treat them and execute them on, on different machine. Uh, as we said, prevent data corruption is, is like the most important goal for fencing. Uh, it's better from our point of view not to restart highly available the VM at all, then restart it twice and make a data corruption. So, uh, in over uh, whole the fencing flow contains three important steps. Uh, the first one is something we call SSH fencing. It's like uh, really the 
I would say the, the easiest things to do is try to connect uh, to the machine and try to restart VDSM, which is our agent which handles uh, all calls between engine and, and hypervisor. If it's not possible or if it succeeded restart but still doesn't work, we continue to the next step and this is the KDAM detection. Uh, when, you, when your server has a hardware error or some kind of kernel issue, it usually uh, it's reboots into what is called KDAMP kernel and uh, it uh, gathers memory data and, and try to uh, save this into some kind of predefined location for further analysis. Uh, when, when this uh, like uh, reboot to KDAMP kernel happens, uh, everything what was running on the server is stopped, so we can assume that like, okay, we, the VMs are no longer running, we can restart them. If we detect that the host is not dumping, then we know something else happened. So the only thing that we can do is try to restart uh, the host completely using power management action. So we execute uh, power management stop, now testing if the host really stopped, when it stops, we try to execute start and uh, testing if the start execution was working fine. When everything was fine, we like still make the host non-responsive, non but we expect that if was start was successful, it will become up at some time. Like it depends on the server, on its size, on its load, uh, how much time it does it take when he came up uh, again. So before we go to the, uh, to the real life examples, so any questions so far? Yes? Uh, do you plan in the host via storage or do you plan on the uh, So the question is uh, if we plan to monitor host via storage. Uh, it's our uh, future plans is uh, to introduce storage fencing. I will try to say something at, at the end about it. Yeah, uh, there, is a, there is also a feature, I, I will talk about it, like it's not storage fencing, but l we, we detect uh, if uh, the VM is still accessing the storage or not. Yes? How do you detect that uh, the host is down in memory? Uh, so the question was how do we detect that the host is dumping its memory? Uh, we are using, uh, uh, or when we deploy the host, uh, we configure uh, KDAMP for it and we add uh, Fence KDAMP, which is a module which uh, sends notifications like when you boot into KDAMP kernel and start gathering the process, you can, <coughs> you can execute a process which sends notification, okay, I'll start the dumping. And those notifications are received until the dumping is over and uh, host is rebooting into a normal kernel again. So we are gathering those notifications. I will show you the example later. And by that we know, okay, this host is dumping. We don't want to fence him not to lose like the dumping information. Any other questions? If not, okay, let's go to the uh, basics. So uh, this is like a pretty easy uh, example we have a host which is non-responding and uh, we don't know nothing about. Let's assume that this is a simple example. Uh, networking is working, but our VDSM agent has crashed. So fencing started in engine, and as we said, the first thing is SSH sort fencing. So we initiate SSH connection to the server and restart VDSM service. After that, we wait for some time if host goes up, everything goes soft. If, if it doesn't work, uh, we continue. In this case, let's assume that, that the restart of VDSM works so the, the fencing flow is over. So this is, this is pretty easy. Uh, let's uh, continue to another example. In this example, for example, I don't know, the port switch uh, stopped working, so we lose connection between the host and the engine. Uh, like we said before, 
host starting to be non-responsive on engine. Uh, we initiate uh, we initiate uh, fencing flow. First step is SSH host fencing. So we try to connect via SSH to host. Unfortunately, it's not possible. So when we get the exception that SSH connection was not possible, we initiate uh, next step. Uh, in this case, uh, for simplicity, KDAMP is not configured, so let's keep it for now. Uh, the, first, the first step is like to do power management restart. So engine tries to select a fence proxy host, as we said before. Once this fence proxy host is selected, engine sends uh, and commands to this fence proxy host, please execute uh, power management stop on, the, on this non-responding host. So here VDSM uh, calls uh, desired fence agent, which is using like the power management API of the host and try to stop it. If this uh, was successful, we know that no VMs no longer running in this host and we can restart our VMs on other hosts. So in engine executes other action in parallel, like which uh, start highly available VMs a normal VMs, it set its status to down and, and other things. Uh, in parallel, we execute another command to the fence proxy. Okay, we know host is down, please start again. So we call fence agent again, and he tries to, to start the host. If the start command was successful, we mark the host as non-responsive, and we wait until it's come up. Uh, any question about about this flow? How how this works? <laughs> okay, let's go on. So this is this is the the case that uh, we, uh, for example, in this case, host everything is fine, but there was some kind of kernel issue, and host is start dumping. Uh, as we said before, during like uh, registering and deploying host to over, uh, if uh, KDAMP uh, detection is, is configured, uh, because like you can turn it off for some reason if you don't want to, but by default it's turned on. Uh, so during uh, during uh, the host deploy, we we alter KDAMP configuration on the host, and we add a special uh, fence KDAMP uh, configuration which uh, sends notification from the host uh, to, the, to the engine at the moment, but another host can be selected. So let's assume that the host started to dump. Uh, the process booted into uh, KDAMP kernel, and this KDAMP kernel starts to send notifications to the engine that the host is dumping. At the same moment, uh, like engine didn't know what happened, it has, like, the host is not responding, so the whole machine is starting up. And uh, as we said, like, the first things uh, that engines want to do is do SSH sort fencing. So he tries to do SSH, con uh, SSH connection. It doesn't work because the host is dumping. So the next step is, uh, like, detect if KDAMP is going on. So he take a look at uh, the database. And there he finds that, okay, host is dumping. At the moment, like the uh, non-responsive treatment of the host stops and wait until like those messages, those notifications stop uh, to come. There are special configuration, but for simplicity, uh, the host is still dumping. If you have a host with lots of memory, it, it can take significant time. So once the host is stop dumping, the notification process like uh, stop sending messages and it reboot it again into, into normal kernel and the boot process start again. So at, at, moment, at this moment and after some timeout, uh, engine says, okay, we stop uh, getting notifications about uh, host dumping. We can assume that host is restarting and we mark it as non-responsive, and uh, we will wait until it's come up. 
So this is this is the K dump. Any questions about it? Yes. You can do offense proxy hosts. So the question is, uh, how do we handle uh, failures of fence proxy? So uh, when engines select uh, like first fence proxy, and uh, during uh, so there are two ways. <laughs> If you are not able to contact the host, so the, the command to execute uh, uh, fence command is not get to the, uh, to the fence host, we just detect it in engine and uh, select another uh, host. Uh, at the same moment, we detect that we cannot contact the original fence proxy. If uh, something happened uh, during this execution of the fence agent, we return just uh, the failure with the reason uh, back to the engine and engine also select uh, different proxy. Uh, by default, we uh, do three tries per each, uh, uh, per each uh, command in the same cluster. If it doesn't work, we try to do same data center, also three retries with different, uh, with different uh, hosts. It's uh, like customizable, if you want more retries, less retries. It depends on you, but this usually is enough. Yes? Uh, when your K dump is running, do you have a timeout? So, uh, so the question is uh, when K dump is running, do we have some kind of timeouts? Uh, yes, uh, there is uh, several timeouts before, like we have, uh, we have uh, timeout when engine uh, tries to detect key dumping before like the first notification gets in. So this is the first timeout. Uh, then we have timeout between uh, like, uh, because by default we send the notification every five seconds. So we have another timeout which detects how many of those notifications can be lost. So for example, like, okay, we, if you lost five notifications, we still assume that k dump is dumping. If you lost six one, okay, k dump is over. And also we have another timeout after the last received notification for how long we can expect that the K dump process is still uh, is finished and we can assume the host is restarted. I meant like a different thing that like your K dump hunt and uh, you still have your notifications coming. But nothing is going on. Imagine your K dump is driving to a host, a remote host with speed of like one, one byte per uh, yeah, so, so even in this case, we just wait uh, until it finishes. Because like uh, we have uh, uh, an event uh, which we send to an administrator, okay, this host is non-responsive or this host started k-dumping. So, so this is just up to the administrator. He received the event and he had to handle it somehow like, you know, if he knows something happening and it's up to him if you like, if he uh, like uh, stop the dumping of the host and reboot it manually. After that, he can like mark the host in in uh, in over. Okay, I rebooted it manually. Treat it as rebooted, and the things go on. But it's up to the administrator. We don't have any other way how to like detect stored K dump or something like that because like the only uh, way we can do we can detect. Okay, we receive notification K dump is going on. Okay, so let's go on. Uh, so uh, this is like slightly more advanced uh, configuration. Uh, let's assume that like we have a host with one cluster and a host with other cluster. Each cluster is connected through its own switch. So let's assume that there is an error in, in the switch for cluster one. Uh, also, uh, each host is uh, or its power management interface is connected in a different switch and also its network is connected in a different switch. Uh, in OVID we also can have like uh, uh, VM access using SPICE or VNC defined on different networks. So I didn't draw it, but let's assume that, that there is also different switch when users can access the VM. So, uh, engine host is non-responsive, engine tries to do SSH authentic, it fails, so he tries to select 
the host from cluster one, it fails because the whole switch is down. Uh, so he tries to do other uh, cluster in the same data center. He select the host, and on this host, like he execute, uh, he execute power management command, and the host is successfully fenced. So, is it? Does it seem right to you? Or do you see any issue with that? Like from the from the uh, from the previous slides, we said okay, host is fenced, everything was fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because the host is still connected to the storage, and we don't know if the issue is like in here. But so okay, engine cannot connect to host, but like we may have users connected through a different networking API which can still access their VM and be pretty happy and they didn't know any issue. So uh, that's why uh, we have like a cluster fancy policy and exactly for these options uh, we by default uh, can turn on skip fencing if the host is still connected to the storage. That's what Alot was talking about. So what happened in this case, if this, if this option is on uh, and engine tries to execute power management stop on, on this fancy proxy host. It is able to connect to Sunlock, which we are using for, for storage synchronization, and ask Sunlock, okay, this host, does it still access the, the storage or does it renew its, uh, its Sunlock lease? If the Sunlock tells him, okay, this, this uh, host is still accessing the storage, we skip the fencing and we said, okay, there is an issue, but the host is still alive and VMs can access it. So this is like kind of protection for us. If you have more complicated network setup, we cannot assume that if this is down, that there is some issue. Like there is an issue, but like for us, it's primarily our users to be able to access the VMs. That's the primary goal. So this is why we have uh, this like kind of fail safe so if the host is connected to storage we skip fencing now uh, another question like okay we, we probably there is an issue with the whole uh, cluster do we still need like to to for each host to execute SSH of fencing and if it fails to to execute a, uh, host stop and then detect if host is connected to storage. Like it's inefficient, right? So this is, we have another things, another options for that. And it, this is keep uh, fencing on cluster connectivity issues when you can define a threshold. For example, if 50% of your host is connecting or non-responding, you can skip the fencing because you know that like this is probably an issue in, in this switch. So in this case, we are like, uh, we can prevent uh, unwanted fencing and we can do it much faster than we like wanted to execute the whole things and detect if cluster is, is uh, connected to the storage. <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, we tried the soft fencing, it fails, and then we called like uh, the, the special verb to our VDSM, uh, please do power management restart. And uh, we, with this command, we sent like if the option uh, like to skip fencing for storage lease, uh, we, uh, we send in. And if this is turned on, the, the first thing that here we do, we like, we contact Sunlock and tell us, okay, are we still connected to storage? If we are not, we continue with power management. So, uh, if you if you go back to the to the cluster fencing policy, there is like first button is enable fencing. Uh, it's like the thing that we introduced in in three dot five last moment. Uh, it. Uh, turns off fencing completely for the whole cluster. Uh, now you think like, is it good thing or bad thing? Like, we have a users that uh, doesn't run a highly available VM, a, and for example, 
the link between engine and, and uh, their host is pretty slow. So they want to like to skip fencing, they want to do everything manually. Now that makes sense. Uh, to turn off fencing completely because they knew the risks, they are okay with that, they don't want to receive or to be they host to be to be fenced uh, inappropriately. Uh, but uh, in the usual flows, the only reason that you want to skip fencing is, for example, sorry, for example, if you know that this uh, switch is, for example, replaced or reconfigured. This is plan, planned reconfiguration, and for example, in, you know, it assumed to take like half an hour to do some reconfiguration. So if you like don't touch it over, all the fencing stuff will happen. Even if it not succeeded, but it will start. So we will receive, okay, our host is not connecting and non-responsive and we attempt to, to associate with fencing and so on. If you want to prevent this, you can do, okay, uh, our uh, switch maintenance started 10 minutes. I will disable fencing for the cluster completely. So we will not fence anything. And when the, the switch maintenance is over, you enable the, the fencing again and everything runs smoothly. So like this is the options. Uh, I think this is the only viable case uh, which you should turn off fencing. Uh, any questions around that? Yes. Is there some API for this because if you have a monitoring uh, yes, uh, all, of, all of the functions or, or definitions are available using REST API. So <laughs> everything you can turn on, off in, in web admin, you can also do in, in REST API. Yes? What happens to my VMs on the non-responding host given it's completely powerless, so I can't reach it via ILO or whatever, so it's completely lost back? Uh, yes, so, so in this case, if you want to be sure, there is, like I said before, there is uh, secondary or, or other uh, power manager agents. So you can define, for example, your ILO as the first one. Yeah. And if it's not reachable, you can define, for example, UPC, uh, fence agent on the UPC. So when we, when we contact the UPC and we said, OK, it's power off, we can power off. If you can't do ever, this doesn't work and everything is broken, the administrator uh, has an option in a web admin or REST API to tell, OK, I manually rebooted the host and I take the responsibility. Like this is the last step we can do. It's up to administrator. If he like only claims to do it, unexpected results can happen. Yes, uh, I, I, I will talk about that in, in, in like future plans. So we, we would like to introduce like a proper, uh, proper uh, storage fencing because like when we have this, we will be like able to, for example, uh, set, okay, this host is in state we don't know about. Please turn Sunlock to stop uh, or to place a like lock that the, this, this instance of VM is not able to access it again and restart it at once. This is, this is a plan for the future. Any other questions? Okay, so, so uh, I, I talk about storage fencing. Uh, the other thing that, that we are like thinking how to do it is like for example, if your host is dumping, uh, it might be a kernel issue uh, fixed by next reboot, but it can be some kind of hardware error. So in that case, like host is start dumping, rebooting back, uh, normal boot process uh, started, there is an issue, boot it to, to kdump, and this is like a never ending story. So we are thinking to do some kind of like, um, let's say, uh, configuration and heuristics for example, if host was k-dumping like maybe three times in the last hour, Mark is an, an non-responsive and, and like don't care with him and let it administrator to do what it happened. So this is like, there are any other questions, I'll be available 
and happy to, uh, to answer them. Thanks a lot for your attention.